What motivates you? And I'm not talking about it's sunny and it's a weekend and it's maybe Saturday and you've got your iTunes on and you're taking a walk through your neighborhood and you feel motivated. I'm not going there. I'm going, it's crunch time. You're in your office. You've got young attorneys that don't want to really work on the client development. You're helping them with that. You've got so much change coming at you. You've got so many things changing in technology. How do you flip a switch? What's the trigger that you use that raises your level of leadership so you can, that you're motivated to do something differently? What's, what's the answer? It's a legitimate answer. Or question, excuse me. What's the picture of your future is another question. How do you focus your energy? How do you get your teammates it's your law practice to focus their energy. The job of a quarterback is focusing 10, men, 10 men's energy. Think about it for just a minute. You've got a big left tackle that just got drubbed and beat by a defensive end, and he sacked the quarterback. A running back goes up into the line of scrimmage and gets stuffed. A receiver drops a pass. A QB sells the ball over somebody's head, and you come back, and 10 men are sitting there in a huddle. And they're black and they're white and there's socioeconomic differences and there's belief systems that are all different and they're all just, a, just an eclectic group of people who've come together and formed a team and a leader steps into the huddle and my job is to focus 10 men's energy for one purpose. Here it is, to win the next play. That's the job. Here's the kicker of all questions I can ask you. What is it that you do? And people will think in their minds, Tom, do you realize what conference you're at? And I know it's kind of an odd question, but let me see if I can even make sense of my own question. How many people have ever been to Disneyland before? I know you have Disneyland, Disney World. Isn't it not an amazing place? Many, many years ago, um, we had lots of business in Southern California, so I bought a season pass. And if you buy a season pass at Disneyland, you'll find that you get a card like this, kind of like a key card to the beautiful hotel that we're staying in. And the key card has a photograph and some basic information. And Molly, my wife, is leading our family, myself, Joe, and Jenny, as they were young kids, into the park. And there's a turnstile, and a woman is there, a young lady in her mid-20s. So Molly takes her card out, hands it to the young woman. She pops it in the machine, turns back to my wife, and says, Molly, happy birthday. And Molly says, thank you, but it's not my birthday. And you can tell this young woman in her mid-20s, she's doing camp math really quickly in her brain. She's going, I know if I can think and guess right, Molly, it's Saturday. And Molly says, yes, it is. She says, besides Molly, I want to be the first to wish you a happy birthday. You, Tom, Joe, and Jenny, come on inside, have a great time. Why? Because they're not just theme parks that make a lot of money, although... There are theme parks that make a lot of money. They're in the happiness business. Disney has a program that these ladies and gentlemen, these young people that work there, they're not employees, they're actors. They don't go to work, they're on stage and performing beautifully a play to the delight of the customers who come. So we crossed that threshold that day after this young lady smiling and welcoming us, welcoming us in that fashion with great expectations for the day to come because she knew exactly what she did.